First is I've just got my camera here. I got 16035 on the body. I'm gonna try this out, see if I can find exactly where I want to set up, or whether also I need to change to my uh, 24 to 105. But I'll start with what I've got on, and I'll move on from there. So a challenge I'm facing here right now is part of the snow that has uh, been plowed is kind of in my shot from this particular spot. But what when I want to shoot a horizontal. But what I've also found is a pretty good vertical. I'm not sure whoop, if you can see it. But I'm going to zoom in enough. I've got undisturbed snow. The uh, foreground of the, the trees here and the mountain. So the trees on the left are a little lower. The trees on the right are a little higher. Kind of balancing out with the mountain in the background so i'm gonna keep my 1635 i'm about at 20 millimeters ish for the shot uh so let me get this uh, set up here what i've done is uh i am actually exposure bracketing i'm here just to make sure i got the full range i am slightly overexposing because it's a wintry scene uh but i am doing a two picture photo stack so I have uh, focused on the trees here in the foreground and then the mountain in the background uh, the middle ground the snow doesn't really matter uh, there's no definition there's nothing of, of terrible interest besides it being a snow covered lake these beautiful trees they got a little snow on them which adds to it uh, the lake snow covered lake in the middle ground and then in the background we've got the beautiful mountain with some trees uh, at the base of it kind of crawling up a little bit and a nice muted blue with some cloud cover so it is a nice interesting uh, shot here I'm gonna get set up hopefully I can frame the composition so here's the secret. This was a very difficult spot to get to. Big snow pile, car, road. So uh, yes, the secret is out. Very difficult uh, composition to get here. Uh, nothing but white snow in the foreground. Well, and these trees. Now what is different there is a slight uh, decline here on the snowbank, kind of going a little left to right, giving a bit of a slope. And then the trees uh, just right behind that. And then the, the mountain in the, in the background. So it's a very muted scene, very wintry scene. There's a bit of blue in the sky, which is nice. Uh, so it's obviously we're not here at sunrise. We're actually midday, which is amazing uh, to be out here at this time so let me i'm going to do a focus stack same as i did the on the first shot i'm just going to focus on the trees f8 i am exposure bracketing just to make sure i've got uh, enough range i'm slightly overexposing because it's a wintry scene there are no filters uh so let's take this shot and now what i'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the mountain. Same settings, F8. I just want to take this moment and say 
as a landscape photographer, normally we're at sunrise and sunset. So in the winter, uh, depending on location and the exact weather conditions, you can actually be shooting midday. It is, it is about 12, 1230 right now. Uh, so in the summertime, this would be harsh light. We'd be hiding somewhere or maybe napping, but these are beautiful conditions here today. I'm quite now, right now I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. A couple of compositions I spotted right off, uh, right from the, the car park area here, for the pull off. I'm actually going to get my snowshoes in the car. I'm gonna walk down and go around and try to shoot from uh, that angle and see what I can get. Uh, I'm here until sunset, uh, which is around 5.30. So I'm here to explore, here to play. Uh, I'm in no major rush, uh, which I think was one of the mistakes I was making earlier uh, on this trip is trying to hit up a few things uh, like when I was photographing at Lake Minnewaka, I was getting there probably about an hour before sunset. I probably got there at least two hours, depending on the light and the clouds, to get more time to play. Uh, so I'm hoping to return. If, if I do, my Lake Minnewaka video will have more than two outings. Uh, if not, it'll end at three. So now I'm currently walking to actually the entrance where the lodge is at Bow Lake want to hike around down there and ex explore. I have my snowshoes. There is a parking lot here. When I was up here scouting yesterday, it wasn't plowed. And I didn't want to get stuck there, so I just parked up here, ready to jump up on the side here if need be. So a bit of a kicker. Yesterday, this road wasn't clear. I nearly got stuck when I had pulled in. Uh, well, not when I pulled in, when I was trying to get out. So I said to myself, I said, self, let's play it safe and let's just park up there and, and hike down. What I should have done was at least come down, check this out and see if it was open or not. And well, obviously it's open, so. My plan is to explore down by the lodge, get closer to the trees in the foreground, and try to really make uh, this mountain here at Bow Lake really massive, because it is quite impressive. Which, when shooting with a wide-angle lens from 16 to 35, may not always do that justice. Now, a quick tip. Is the fact that in my compositions the mountain was at the top of the frame uh, the lens helped distort it kind of bringing it back to a little more of a natural state as if the if it was more in the middle it would have tended to flatten it, it out uh, that's a side effect of the uh, wide angle lenses Okay, just taking a, a breather here. Uh, this little trail, it's not a shelter, but they've got a trail map and some stuff here. And worries about avalanches. So yes, I'm in avalanche country. I'm not really uh, going beyond really where this lodge area is. Uh, so uh, I'm not worried about that. It is, I, I will say, a beautiful day. Um, I will quickly show you. So this is my new pack. It is the Shimoda X50. I did order it off the Kickstarter. I was actually looking at the original Shimoda line. Uh, and, I, and I saw they're on sale. I'm like, oh, this might be a good time to buy. You know, I could use it for this trip. So then this, this came up on uh, Kickstarter and with the December delivery time. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's, you know, I looked at it. Uh, I was seeing, um, uh, videos of some photographers I follow using it uh, and, and it looked to be a good bag now I haven't fully put this through the test uh, through the the paces so I still have to use it more but so far I'm liking it uh, it's quite comfortable in fact I'll show you this is the back panel 
So this is what I have loaded in it. I have my camera body, A7R3, 16 to 35. Uh, my new uh, 70, or sorry, new so Sony 100 to 400. Uh, that I just got prior to coming on this trip. Actually, this might use it in a few minutes here, so let's check that out. Let's check, see if I do. And I have a 24 to 105. Now, so I, I am carrying this because I was on a, a trip uh, this time last year, and I had two, and I was using uh, Canon at the time, and my camera fell, broke the 17 to 40 that I had, uh, which was a friend's, it wasn't mine, I had to replace it. And my 7200. So when I broke the 17 to 40, I only had my long lens, but I actually had uh, a 24 to 105 I just left at home. So if I would have had that, I would have at least had the extra range in case I didn't with a lens. But also just in the case, given the fact that from a 35 to 100, there's a wide range in there. So having having this can be handy as well. And I got some other stuff stored up here. I haven't even. This is rolled down to its, uh, its tightest uh, formation at this point, so there's plenty of space for other stuff. Well, like I say, I'm liking it so far. Once again, not very adventurous. That's where the lodge is, so the parking lot is there, and the highway is just up. Hang on. So the lodge is there. I got a point. And the highway is just up there. When I do this off screen, that doesn't help anyone because you can't see that. So, lodge. This is Bow Lake. So I have to be very careful now where I walk. I followed a trail in here where somebody, so you can see I followed a trail in to where I am currently standing with my bag in that spot. Now people have walked a little further. A little unfortunate because that tree is a nice potential composition. Uh, Bow Lake is over here. But what I might do is, uh, as you can see here, this might be a shot I set up. It's kind of framed, this tree here on the left, the mountain on the right provides a little bit of scale. So I might look to do that shot, but the shot I'm getting set up right now, as I pan over, see that would be a good shot for scale, and I might just have to Photoshop uh, the tracks here. Uh, so we'll see. But what I've got set up, and this is another potential shot, but what I'm going to do with the long lens, get that mountain in that lower part. So the 100 on my 100 to 400 pretty much covers a nice rectangular uh, area there. And I might even zoom in at the top of the, of the peak. So I'm just going to find the right height for uh, my composition. Then I'm going to set up my uh, tripod and uh, then work on the other shots. So about neck height. So now I got framed up where I want. So I'm gonna have to extend the tripod fully. Now some people like these clamps, which I currently do. I had the twist ones before on a different tripod, and I found they weren't sticking, uh, staying firm too well. So when I upgraded tripods to this one. I specifically want these clamps. Time goes by, yeah, you and I are running out, running out. Time goes by, I'll change my mind about you and I, you and I. So would you stay?
So I switched back to my 16 to 35. Now I have to be very careful and I was actually quite happy. There's a couple other photographers walked up or uh, guys with cameras. So the, but they didn't walk anywhere ahead of me. They didn't destroy uh, the scene in front. So there's already enough footprints here. So I'm hoping to, there's one shot I might do that I'm gonna have to, if I do that shot, have to post process to get rid of all the feet or the steps and you know make it some smooth snow which shouldn't be too difficult uh so let's let's get moving here let's get these shots set up uh this actually will be a nice series um very muted very you know very wintry calm scenes uh it's not the epic sunrise sunsets but it's, it's a nice daytime shot it's it's uh, the light is actually very beautiful. It's it's diffused. There's some direction to it. It's not too flat. Um, thanks to the sun popping in and out. So let's get shooting. So once again, uh, I'm gonna take my camera. Look at those same compositions now that I was doing with the iPhone. Uh, see where that composition is, and then set up my tripod as necessary. So I didn't use my tripod for this. The uh, even though I'm ISO 100, I'm shooting f13. Uh, the shutter speed is very much within handheld range. So what's amazing is I've been in generally just two locations and I've come away with a number of photographs that I'm extremely happy with uh, given the weather conditions. So the one challenge I'm having right now with this shot, and I'm, you know, challenge, and, and this will be something when I get it back into Lightroom and really have a, a look at it, is the balance. Just in terms of the number of trees. So on the left-hand side, You've got these two trees, but on the right hand side, you've got this clump of trees. But given the fact that this mountain is much more pronounced uh, than the one that's kind of in the center, even the back left, this still might work. Awesome Photoshop work to do with the footsteps in front. Hopefully, I can uh, fix that up. But I think it's a you know a nice composition. So uh, once again, handheld, middle of the day. Uh, Simply right now, it's, it's the tripod isn't 100% needed. All right, I'd like to say I've got some majestic uh, pose here. I'm actually uh, sitting on my ass right now. I had actually, so I found the shot. I literally walked 20 feet, 20 feet, something like that. So there's uh, Crawford, Crawford Mountain, I believe it's called. Uh, camera, and I found this little open area. Now there are some footprints beyond it that I'm probably, I will have to fix in Photoshop depending on how it comes in. But I sunk down into my knees, so that was the right height. But I have my snowshoes on, so basically, it's almost like a turtle trying to get over. It definitely was not majestic, and thankfully no one really was here to see it. So uh, let's see if I can actually get back up on my feet. Hang on. Ah. Success. Not sure, but there you can tell, yeah, in me. That's where I went down right there. Somewhat on purpose, but kind of forgot I had the snowshoes on. Really made it diff more difficult to get up. <laughs> Thank you.
I actually pulled out the 100 to 400 again and trying to capture that peak because uh, it's been opening up a little. I don't really have to see whether I got a shot from there, but it's also tight, kind of a little wide, and even a little wider this this way uh, with the 100 to 400. Okay, so I repositioned up to the Bow Lake uh, lookout. Uh, you can see it behind me here. Now, unfortunately, the clouds that were uh, in this general area on top of that peak area there, uh, they disappeared. Uh, it's like Mother Nature's like, oh, you're moving to get a better shot, you think? Not tonight! So those clouds disappeared. But I did catch a nice time lapse and a photo down uh, just off the road. Uh, so the light is pretty much gone. Uh, there are no more high clouds and really in this area they're gonna catch. Well, that is it uh, for this particular outing. Had a great time up at uh, Bow Lake in Banff National Park. I highly recommend you go there both summer, winter, well, I guess pretty much any season you can get up there. Uh, pro tip, check out the parking lot in winter, make sure it actually is open. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, bye for now.